Good evening and welcome to this month's webinar from AHDB Soya Cereals and Oil Seeds, making the most of the recommended list. I'm Judith Stafford, Knowledge, Knowledge Exchange Manager for AHDB Cereals and Oil Seeds in the East Midlands, and I'm delighted to be joining you this evening for our latest webinar. run through a few housekeeping points. You are muted, we can't see or hear you. If you have any questions, can you type them in please? There's a little box which you should be able to find on your on the right hand side of your screen. Likewise, if you have any technical issues, can you use it for that? And Questions will by and large be saved until the question session at the end. Due to finish round about eight o'clock, applied for basis points for this. If you wish to claim your points, make sure you send your details in. Again, same method, use the, the box the right hand side of the screen, put your details in, name, postcode, and your basis number. This webinar is going to be recorded and it will be added to the AHDB YouTube site. Last bit of this, if you have any feedback on the webinar or if you have ideas for future webinars, please let us know. It'll help us to shape the programme. First introduction from otherwise is uh, Colin Chapel. Colin's our Brig Monitor Farmer farms at Gander Farm at Hibblestow. Uh, I, I do wish to especially thank Colin for taking the time out this evening. I know he's extremely busy and I guess the tractor was still probably rolling forward when he jumped off it. So uh, very grateful <laughs> to you, Colin. Also, no Bastian speaking tonight. Bastian's research data analyst for AHDB. Um, Finally, she's hiding in the background, but Michelle, who we don't have a picture of her here, she's controlling everything. She's put all this together and um, she's making sure everything happens when it should and how it should. First then, over to Colin to uh, introduce yourself. Thanks, Colin. Hi, well, yes, as it says there, I'm the big monitor farmer, getting a hell of a lot out of the uh, process of being the monitor farm. Not getting so much out of the cereals at the moment because we're just planting them. We're planting three quarters of the farm as we go. My rotation, as it says there, includes wheat, also rape and peas, although this year beans, canary seed, maize, you name it, we've got it in the rotation because there is no rotation. Um, we are now getting to the fields that were flooded in November and February and they are starting to allow us to travel. So we're getting there, it's very slowly, but as you say, we, I just literally jumped off the tractor 10 minutes ago. I didn't say at the start, but I think I will just mention it. Um, if, if things appear to be slightly hesitant, we can't see each other. And usually when AHDB Cereals and Oil Seeds does webinars, everyone's in the same room together. So we do have that added uh, uh, challenge. Uh, please bear with us. Um, question for Colin then. How do you go about selecting the variety, Colin, to, to, to grow on your farm? Well, um... There's, there's one thing I'm particularly interested in, is group threes and I know group threes are quite specific so my contract allows that to go to group four softs. Um, we are high yielding farm normally, normal year and therefore we need quite a good standing resistance and also I have issues with yellow rust and septoria. Um, sort of in equal measures depending on the season from, from year to year. Um, and that's sort of the specification I'd quite like to look at tonight, please. Are there any particular AHDB resources that you use for selecting? Yes, well, we, we get the recommended list and um, we've started to use the internet more as a tool to, to narrow down our varieties. And this tool that Bastion's now developing that's soon to go live will allow us to narrow that even further and therefore we can get almost exactly what you want for your farm in your position what's relevant to you now 
Thank you, Colin. Um, what we'll do now is move over to Bastian, who will talk about what's currently available from DB. Thanks, Judith. Uh, so just as a, a as an introduction, so I've been with ASP for five years now. Uh, initially, I was uh, working uh, basically processing the all the data when it came in and doing uh, additional analysis around harvest time. And then more recently, I've uh, started to move away slightly in that I've become the developer of uh, a range of decision support tools, one of which is the variety selection tool, but I also work on uh, IPM related decision support tools that use weather data. So that's sort of the core of my work currently. But for tonight, I'll focus on the variety selection tool as part of the recommended list project. Um, so uh, just to mention that uh, the new booklet uh, is available now. It can be ordered from the email address or uh, the telephone number, as uh, you'll see on your slide. Uh, the summer edition will be available in June and it will contain some updates. Uh, this is because the candidates, if they aren't nationalisted, we can't release that data until they are. And uh, by June time, that, should, uh, that process should have been completed. So something really exciting, uh, I've not been involved uh, in this myself, but my colleague Ali Marshall has, and uh, we are working with an external company to develop a new app. So uh, the pocketbooks that uh, we used to uh, give out uh, at ASDB events that were very popular on serials, we will turn that into an app. So uh, that's right now is happening and we are asking uh, for feedback, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, really excited uh, about that. So uh, a couple of points there, it will be available on Apple as well as Android. It will uh, work offline, uh, as I said, uh, because these pocketbooks, we didn't send them out. We, they were only available from events. So this app should have uh, a further reach and we can also update them throughout the season rather than having to uh, add uh, updates. So they will serve as a direct replacement for the pocketbooks with limited interactivity. However, uh, you will be able to add your comments just like with the old pocketbook where you would add that, scribble them in the margins. The app will allow you to add variety comments so you can use them at events to add comments uh, on the app for a particular variety. So uh, I wanted to elaborate on a couple of points on the recommended list booklet and um, particularly uh, yield control uh, varieties and in the second slide, the LSD values. So sometimes we get the question, why are you not expressing uh, the actual yield why are these numbers uh, close to 100 and, and the reason for that is that we express the uh, yield of a variety against a group of carefully selected control varieties uh, so in this case you can see that skyfall and siskin in this screenshot have been um, a circle so they are part of the control group the other two are kws barrel and elation and the reason we do that is because yield itself, as you, you all know, uh, varies considerably due to uh, weather and disease severity. And by expressing it as a percentage, we can keep it a bit more stable. Um, so that's the reason why we uh, express it as a, as a percentage against a benchmark variety. Otherwise, it would fluctuate too much from year to year. So on to the uh, aspect of, this, of least significant difference. And uh, we've had some feedback that this is not understood well enough, or sometimes it is ignored altogether. So I thought I'll uh, mention it and, uh, and how to interpret it. So the uh, least significant difference is calculated for each of the characters that you see. So for example, in the second row, we see the first uh, group we see fungicide treated grain yield, 
you've got all the values uh, for the varieties and then all the way on the right hand side you see the average LSD value and in this case for example for the United Kingdom we see that the average LSD is 2.1 so what does that mean well the LSD is the value at a particular level of statistical probability where varieties can be considered distinct if the difference between the means exceed this value uh, so um, Judith, if you can move to the next slide. So, for example, I wanted to focus on yellow roster as a particular example. We see that the average LSD is 0.7. So, suppose that we have two varieties, I'll just call them A and B. Variety A has a yellow rust rating of 6, whereas variety B has a yellow rust rating of 7. So it's it's reasonable to wonder if you see that well variety b must be better than and the question is is that true and the the way to ask the question is slightly differently is there enough statistical evidence to suggest that variety b is more resistant against yellow rust than variety a and the answer is it depends and this is something that may not be clear from the table because what we are doing here as you can see we are rounding the uh, rating to the nearest whole number so if the actual value of yellow rust resistance rating for a is 6.4 whereas for b it's 7.4 then the difference is one and that difference is larger than the uh, LSD value. And therefore, yes, in that scenario, the first one, A and B, are different. And therefore, you could arguably say that B is better for yellow rust resistance. However, if the actual values for variety A and B are uh, 6.4 and 6.6, .6, then the value the difference there is only 0.2. And therefore, the L it's uh, less than the LSD and therefore these varieties should be considered as having the same yellow rust resistance and I think this is where the variety selection tool is a bit clearer because we give the data to the uh, to the first uh, decimal so when it comes to demonstrating the variety selection tool in a minute I can show you that with the slider you can very carefully select the actual point decimal uh, position and therefore you could lose say variety A if you want uh, a yellow rust rating of 6.5 and higher. Okay, so now is the time for me to um, start presenting the variety selection tool. So I'll um, I just want to make you aware of where to find it. So um, we have on the ACB uh, website we've got the main page for all the variety selection tools is in the VST so variety selection tool that's our acronym and currently we've got the winter wheat variety selection tool and the spring barley variety selection tool these are the tools that have been published since December and uh, we've been trying to raise awareness for these tools so I've been going on um, monitor farm meetings um, agronomy events etc to talk about them to understand what might work what uh, I need to explain better or perhaps even change about the tool so what I intend to do now is uh, demonstrate the winter weed variety selection tool so I just click that one and now I'm moving to the uh, winter weed variety selection tool so let's see it starts loading up and here it is so what you'll see immediately is that there's a lot of filters here and the font is fairly small so what you should probably do if you 
uh, are using the tool is go to the full screen mode. So here you can see the diagonal arrows, and this is how you maximize the tool uh, to fill your screen. So um, essentially all our variety selection tools will have the same setup. And uh, I mentioned winter, winter wheat and spring barley are the ones currently published. We intend to add the winter barley, winter oxid rape, and winter oat one uh, by June time. And they will look similar, not exactly the same, but similar in setup. So the demonstration uh, for each of these, uh, for the, the demonstration should uh, basically, if you understand how it works for winter wheat, it, means you work, it, it, you understand how it works for all of them. So there's uh, five ways to interact with this tool. So let's first take a look at this graph. So this is where, the, this is essentially the key bit of information for the tool. So we have uh, characterized yield uh, varieties in, in, in terms of two aspects. On the y-axis, we've got yield, and on the x-axis, we've got something called agronomic merit. I'm going to explain what agronomic merit is and also how you can change that because we allow the user to change agronomic merit. So, and the reason we want to move away from uh, just looking at the variety in terms of its yield is because we have received feedback that farmers do not consider varieties just in terms of its yields. And um, more important, more and more, we find that farmers want varieties with good disease resistance. And this is where agronomic merit comes in. So what you'll see in this graph is that there's a subtle color range. So in the bottom left, we've got sort of the orange, whereas over there, we've got the greens. So ideally, we want varieties that sit in this top right-hand corner. So in other words, they yield well, and they also have a strong genetic uh, package that uh, gives them yield resistance. So what you'll be aware of is that we are looking currently at uh, the yield the untreated yield, that means untreated in the recommended list context means uh, trials that have not received uh, fungicides. So another way of looking at yield is uh, to look at what happens uh, for, uh, when varieties have been treated. So the current setup is for the UK untreated yield. But if we look at the treated yield, so this is one way of interacting. So all the buttons in this section, they change what metric is on the y-axis. So that's one way of, to think about it. Everything that you change here, or these buttons, change what is on the y-axis. You ha still have exactly the same number of varieties on the, in there. Uh, so now we are looking at how varieties performs uh, when all the uh, trials were average. If we just look at the performance of varieties in the east, that's uh, that button to uh, click. If on the other hand, you farm in the north, so north, north of England or Scotland, you should select that way. And then you can see that particular varieties perform much better in the north than they perform uh, elsewhere. Um, So um, that is, I'll come back to the treatment benefit in a bit. I'll try to uh, explain the other ways of interacting first before I come back to treatment benefit. So the second way of interacting is to change what's happening on the x-axis. So that happens in agronomic merit. I'm going to skip that for now because I don't think that it is the most important. So that's the reason why we've hidden it this is a sort of an additional layer of complexity that you can explore after a while. Or if you understand, if you understand the tool completely, then you can go straight into it. But I think the most powerful uh, aspect that I want to demonstrate 
and now before going into coming back to economic merit is the filter panel so what the filter panel does is allow you to narrow all the varieties so remember these are all the 35 varieties that are currently on the recommended list if you want to come to a sensible selection obviously you need to get rid of some so uh, we'll do that in a moment uh, with a very concrete example from uh, colin but just to uh, give an example if for example i grow uh, i'm just interested in group one weeds i select from the end use group i select group ones so now i've got my four varieties left so given that i'm interested in group ones uh, the uh, logical uh, next step would be to say well i want to have a variety that is uh, has a high protein spec so i would move this slider to say 13.3 and all of a sudden that means that Crusoe is the realistic variety left. So that's in some scenarios how quickly you can narrow down your 35 varieties to a, a, a subsection. And then if you want to get all your varieties back, you click clear all filters. That means you lose your selection and you're back with your setup. So just to repeat, if you want to change what yield major you're looking at, click one of these buttons. If you want to get rid of varieties, use the filters on this filter panel, and that will very, very quickly narrow down um, your uh, varieties. Now, let me say uh, something Bastian, about- you've just, Bastian, you've just uh, highlighted exactly why I grow Cuso, because for those characteristics, the naturally high protein, I, yeah. um, I, I, I know Cuso is an old variety, but I can't get away from it because it's naturally high, stands well and fits all the requirements and you've just highlighted that in one slide so that, that that's brilliant and it's even better that we didn't rehearse this bit uh colin <laughs> no true so uh, yes the, uh, yeah i i um i agree um it in particular scenarios it obviously i helped myself by selecting the group ones and there's only four in there so if you if you grow a, a hard group four then you might have to uh, add some more criteria to your filtering process, but eventually, uh, essentially, the process is the same. Um, but I know that we are going to uh, go through a more another scenario with you in a moment, so we can demonstrate that. I just want to uh, spend some a little bit of time on agronomic merit because, in my experience, this is um, probably the hardest part to explain well. Uh, so. I've clicked this tab and now you'll see this uh, a range of buttons there. So what does that do? So as I said, ag this is where you can manipulate how agronomic merit is calculated. So, and what it means is that if septoria for your farm is very important, then so each of these regions, so if I, for example, in for the north, brown rust, typically doesn't have a high importance but if on the other hand i'm uh, farming in the east brown rust is more important so what's happened behind the scenes is that um the importance has changed so i'm going to go back to the website and go to this table now so this is an example of how economic merit is calculated so as you can see, this uh, takes the uh, ratios of a particular variety. And as the importance to brown rust in this case is set to low, which means that the weighting, which is the a number associated with each of these categories is, is one. For very high, the weighting is 10. For high, the weighting is seven. And for medium, the weighting is four. So, if brown rust, if, if you set the importance to low, it means that the rating is multiplied by one and therefore your score is eight. On the other hand, we, if you set the importance of septoria to very high, which means a weighting of 10, then your rating, which is six, is multiplied by 10 and therefore you get a score of 60. So that happens for each of these 
components and then you add it all up to get agronomic merit. So you understand if you look at this table that if you, a variety has high resistance ratings for everything, then the agronomic merit score will go up and up and up. So in this chart, varieties with good genetic potential will tend to move to the right hand side, whereas those varieties with weaker genetics or, or genetics where the resistance has broken down, they tend to sit there. So that gives you an additional insight in the potential of a variety. Rather than just looking at yield, you can look at the overall genetic strength. So, um, by, so in this case, for example, we're looking at the East. So we've set up a default weighting, but you can change that. If, for example, in the East, you think that uh, brownest is very important. So you click very high. So what has changed now is that whereas initially it was medium and therefore the brown rust rating was multiplied by four, you've now selected very high and that means the brown rust rating is multiplied by 10. So those varieties with a high brown rust rating will move to the right. So those get benefit, they get moved to the right hand side, whereas um, because they get weighted more and therefore they move to the right hand side. And you can take that approach to the extreme. And I'm going to, so for example, agronomic merit currently is the total sum. But you can also look at the uh, septoria rating. So currently we're looking at uh, the septoria rating. And, and if you think about it, what's happening behind the scenes is that because the weighting for low is one, and I set all the other weightings to, so none is a, a weighting of zero. So I multiply the septoria rating by one, and I multiply the yellow rust rating with zero, and the same for all the other ones, and therefore the agronomic merit is simply the septoria uh, rating. So if you are just interested in uh, septoria, if none of the others matters for you, then you can might as well express agronomic merit simply as the as the septoria ratings or uh, the, the yellow rust rating. So you can see if you click that one now, everything is not except yellow rust rating. And then you can very clearly see that there's a whole bunch of varieties with a pretty good yellow rust rating, uh, but not these ones. So uh, that is, uh, agronomic merit. Uh, I'm going to go back to filter panel, uh, to the filter panel now. Um, so, and the other thing to say is that if you have changed the importance, for example, here, you can simply get the, the, the regional setting by clicking one of these buttons. So let's say I change this to yellow rust rating. If I click this button again, then it goes back to that setting. So I just wanted to uh, show one uh, more level of uh, interactivity. Let's say I want to find out, a me uh, so I'm going to go to uh, select just group one variety. So let's say there's a new variety that I don't know much, uh, so much about. Let's say it's Zayat. It's not actually new, but let's just pretend it's new and I want to know a bit more about it. So what you can do is you go with your mouse to the symbol, you right click, and you should have two options. Drill through, if you click, if you hover to drill through and then variety info, it takes you to the second page of the variety selection tool and it gives you some additional information for just that variety. So uh, what I've listed here is the parentage for that variety, the scope of recommendation, uh, the uh, UK contact, that's the breeder uh, for that variety in the UK, uh, some additional variety information if it's available, um, not, not necessarily uh, present for every variety, then we've got the ratings here, some information about how many yield trials that variety has been 
uh, grown in over the last five years or in the last year. So here, for example, we see that it's been grown in trials that did receive fungicide in 71. So for the north, that's uh, 24, for the west, that's 38. Over the last five years, it was included in 36 trials that did not receive any fungicides, and in the last year, it was included in nine of the same, of the same type. Then on the right-hand side, there's some information about yield consistency. So what that is, that is exactly the same information as you will find in the recommended list booklet. So on page two and three for a given variety, you'll see the performance for in each of these regions, so west, east, and north. So again, that uh, goes back to my earlier point about the uh, yield variety, uh, the control variety. So it's expressed relative to these controls. And what I wanted to do was create a visualization that shows how consistent a variety is for two dimensions. One is for the regions and the other one is in years. So sometimes farmers say, I don't necessarily want the best performing variety. I want the variety that performs consistently. And uh, this graph, to show you if that's happening. So in this case, we're looking at Zayat, we see that there's some uh, variation across years, um, and we see that there's a little consider, uh, variation across regions. Um, so there's another, and if you want to go back, you click that arrow. Just wanted to um, demonstrate for another variety, um, for example, Illicit. Illicit is, an, is a very nice example of a variety. You can see here that the uh, illicit uh, is sort of, is very uh, stable across regions. It doesn't matter whether you grow in the north, the west or the east, it's roughly a hundred. Um, so each variety has its, its sort of um, uh, set of consistencies. And it, I think it's useful to uh, see how a variety compares against others. So again, click on this area and then you're back in the main tool. And then finally, um, there's one more way of interacting with the um, in the tool, and that's to choose how these points are colored. So currently we're looking at how many years these varieties have been on the recommended list. So the, all the, the blue varieties are the ones that are new so in this case we've got four new varieties and then uh, more varieties that have been on the list two or four two to four years and the old ones are green so i think what was quite a nice uh, message in this graph is you can see that over time the um, varieties have been have really um, become more yielding and also increased uh, somewhat in their uh, genetic package. So other options exist. So if you want to see which varieties are the control varieties, you can see that very clearly uh, and use group uh, scope of recommendation, etc. cetera. Uh, so the reason we've included the number is, uh, so in the table, you, as those of you who are uh, experienced um, users of the recommended list booklet will have seen that some of the figures are mentioned in brackets that indicate that there's limited data. So um, I wanted uh, to find a way to uh, make that clear. And so where there's limited data, it's usually in these trials, so the sprouting trials, the late drill trials, uh, trials on light source, etc. So varieties that have uh, limited data, they are uh, indicated in orange, so that means that they've been included in a few, uh, fewer than six trials, early drill trials in this case. Uh, but that really getting into the, the detail of um, the tool now. So um, I think, yes, actually I, I want to uh, say one more thing before going to you, Colin. Um, so I mentioned on the y-axis we've got yield. Um, what I haven't shown actually, and what I think is one of the most important aspects is treatment benefit. So what is treatment benefit? 
treatment benefit is the difference in yield between trials that did receive fungicides and trials that did not receive fungicide. So uh, in this chart, you'll see that um, based on uh, five-year data, you see that leads, for example, um, there's a difference roughly of 3.3 tons per hectare uh, between those trials. So on the other hand of the spectrum, we've got varieties like Xtase. I think it's uh, by now a fairly well-known variety. And also the new variety, Theodore. That's actually, uh, look at them in, the, in terms of the years on recommended listing. You can see Theodore is a new variety. And these varieties are um, perform particularly well in, in uh, trials that did not receive uh, in intense fungicide treatment as uh, is happening in the recommended list. And why is this relevant? Well, if you, if you think about it, particularly uh, in, the, in the concept of planning your fungicide input regime, is it would be madness to treat varieties that are on this side of the spectrum in the same way as varieties are on that side of the spectrum. And um, so this information, um, I think, the, because we've uh, displayed it in terms of the absolute values between the uh, mean across all treated and minus the mean of all untreated, uh, you can see more clearly what how sensitive varieties are to not receiving fungicides. And then the uh, last year data is there as a sort of a safety net. So if you click the same uh, uh, treatment benefit graph for the last year data, you see that Theodore and Xtase are still in this position. And that means that based on last year's data, the, the disease resistance of Theodore and Xtase has not broken down because if that happens, the uh, yield difference or the treatment benefit, you would expect that to go up. So looking at the last year's data is the, is the best way to look whether the uh, position of varieties in this graph is actually still the same. Um, then um, one more point, and I need to I need to do an actual variety selection scenario for that. So I'm just going to uh, select two varieties. So that, that is something else. So if you are absolutely sort of agnostic as to what varieties you want to end up with, that you can use one or more of these filters. If on the other hand you already have uh, three varieties in mind, let's for argument say Bennington, Costello and Dunstan. And, uh, excuse me if, if this is not a, re a very realistic scenario, I've just picked uh, three varieties. Um, so now what you see is that uh, you can compare them in this way. Uh, but what you have to bear in mind is that the x-axis is not fixed, so it scales depending on what varieties are selected. So you see that it, the, the range is very narrow. So that's something to bear in mind, is that actually these varieties are, are, are not very uh, different in terms of the agnomic map. That's something that you actually have to bear in mind. So if we look at the varieties when they're all there, the range goes from roughly 260 to 320. If you've got fewer varieties, uh, let's say uh, Bennington and Costello, Now it stretches those varieties out, and uh, there could be a perception that Costello is way better in terms of its economic merit, whereas in reality, uh, these varieties are, are, are quite similar compared to the whole setup. So that's something that you do need to bear in mind. But that, but unfortunately, I need to make this axis dynamic, otherwise, you can't uh, manipulate the importance, uh, as you'll probably understand. Um, so uh, that covers, I think, all of what the tool does. Um, I'm working on a set, another version of the tool. If there's time, I'll cover that. Otherwise, I'm happy to um, leave it until we publish that version. I do have 
a question there that Michel will put a link to in the um, in the chat and also in the email later. And if you help me with answering that question, it will inform the way the updated Windweed Right Selection tool how that will look like. Uh, but for now, uh, uh, Colin, can you uh, repeat sort of the, um, the the variety selection scenario on your farm, and then I can yeah, see sure, if I can. Uh, sure, we'll, we'll we'll go through it one by one, shall we? So, sort of yeah. group three or group four softs for a start, I think. Okay, so let's let's select. Oh, I'm in the east. Yes, I'm in the east. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll select the east region, and then we we'll go to. Uh, the end use group uh, will do soft fours and threes. And threes, it's just three is quite narrow, isn't it? So that's why we're saying four as well. So, yeah. So that's left quite a few varieties to choose from. Uh, RGT Saki is the is the the new variety. And then okay, so we want a, quite a good yellow rust and septoria rating. Okay. So this, this is where it comes back to my uh, earlier point about um, disease resistance ratings. And in the tool, we consider ratings to the first decimal point. So when you in, in your head, when you think good, what, what would that equate to? Well, good, good to me is seven or eight, but we made a point between us earlier of, of six. Where where does the six sit in good terms? Okay, so if you say seven, that would mean that a variety with six point five actually is rounded up. So we would have to set this to six point five. So in the table, all the varieties that are now left, they would have a seven for Septoria or higher. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we've done Septoria. So now we can uh, we can see already uh, that. Let's just demonstrate that again. That's so really before, narrowed it down, hasn't it? Yes, exactly. Yellow. Yeah, so before we did that, it ranged from four point five to eight point eight. But if we do that again, six point five, we can demo that. So that then changes, and see that the rating of the current one range between 5.4 and 8.8. .8. So if we, it would it be reasonable to say that we move this one to 6.5 as well? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Okay, let's see what happens if we do that. Probably, okay, so we've just lost one variety. So currently there's, there's three more in the mix. Um, and then you wanted good lodging resistance. Uh, a good, a good, good standing, standing ability, really. Please. Yeah. So the current range of the um, uh, varieties range between six point seven and eight point one. So as soon as we move this one, we'll start to lose at least one. Um, if we move that to seven point five, we should lose at least one. So that means that we've got Firefly and Saki left. Uh, so that's for uh, your farm in, what is it, maybe two minutes? And is that with PGR or without PGR? It's not big enough for me to be able to see at the moment. Oh, yes, good point. Uh, the font is quite small. Uh, I'll, I'll concede that straight away. So that's something that I have addressed in the new version. Uh, so currently I use the uh, lodging with PGR. We can check what would happen if we move uh, the one with uh, without PGR. Let's move that to seven. In that case, we would just be left with <laughs> by. And, and the irony of the situation is exactly the variety I was growing in November, shortly before the River Ancombe came over and flooded that field. So. Right, okay. So and and you how did you how did you end up with Firefly? Did you use the RL booklet for that, or did you use more information? Yeah. So but so basically, I narrowed it down through that list that I've just given you, but yeah. did it manually through the paperwork. Yes. This tool allows you to narrow it down and get that you know in a much quicker, more efficient way of doing it than manually trying to work out where you need to be. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Thanks, Colin.
Um, well, no, thank you. That got me, got me the variety I wanted. Yes. Um, so I think we're quite on track. I, I've got three minutes left to give a, a very quick sneak preview of the uh, new version of the tool that I've been working on. And um, so I'll do that straight away now. So you'll see that it looks largely the same, but something that I have done is uh, look at the filter panel. So I found that the filter panel was quite busy. The font was quite small. There was basically too much. I wanted to, to do too much. So I've, um, as an approach, I've taken the filters out that relate to yield. So what do I mean with that? That's the filters that, for example, uh, allow you to select for varieties that perform well in a first wheat or allow you to uh, select varieties that do well on heavy land. Those filters have been taken out for now uh, so that this does not look so busy and, and it has also given the benefit of increased form. But otherwise, everything is the same. On the other hand, that those filters that have been removed are not completely lost. So just as a, as a demonstration, let's say uh, I want to uh, grow a soft group four. Um, so these are the varieties left. Now I'm going to uh, lose some more with Sartoria. We're setting Sartoria. So now I've got three left. What I do now in the new tool, I click on this button and I am able to compare these varieties for a lot more information. So I can look at the scope of recommendation, not so exciting, or I can look at the main market options, uh, but probably I should look at yield metrics. Now, this is where I haven't um, developed the uh, tool uh, well enough. So you'll see that there's still a lot of gobbledygook. But you can see the, the idea, so we can, uh, this section is more or less finished, so you can see the ratings here, um, and there's options to make this a bit more intuitive with either icons or changing the background color to highlight. Um, so for example, in this case, Sundance does better on Sartoria resistance, so I could potentially increase an icon that highlights that, etc. So that, that is an, uh, a prototype of the version that I'm working on. And uh, with that, I think I've uh, demonstrated enough and I want to hand back to Julia for the question section. Could I just ask you then, uh, Bastian, what, what your time scale is for that new development? Uh, yes, so um, the uh, priority is to get the other three tools developed and online before um, sort of finishing uh, the winter wheat one. But on the other hand, it makes more sense to make a decision on what the new variety selection tool for winter wheat is going to look like, because then it will be easier to replicate that uh, setup for the winter barley, winter oats, and winter Aussie rape one. So hence why I thought this webinar would be an excellent opportunity to get some feedback. So particularly what I'm after is to hear from uh, the people joining us, uh, what filters uh, really, really need to be present on the filter panel. Um, and yeah, uh, the new tools should be online by um, at, the, at the latest end of May. Very good, thanks, Bastian. Michelle, could we, um have any questions and and if you have any questions you'd like to ask uh, please type them in uh, Michelle will put them together and, uh, and and we'll we'll put them over yep so I've got a question for you here saying how could I use the tool to help in a wet year can it help me work out which to which varieties will do better if drilled later yes uh, so that's a uh... Ironically, that's a question that the current tool uh, allows us to answer a little bit better. 
So if we, if, if you consider, um, uh, the, I guess the question is, I, I probably need to have it defined a bit more specific. So we have uh, two filters. One is, um, um, so for example, if we want to select varieties that perform well in a late drilled slot, we could use that uh, here. And you can see that we are just left with five varieties that perform well in a late drilled slot. Uh, what's relevant is to work out what late drilled actually means. So for us, it means drilled after the 1st of November, but I think it's highly unlikely that it would uh, include variety uh, uh, trials that are drilled like in the situation we were in this season. So if you're, if you want to ask the question slightly differently is what wind weed varieties can you sow really, really late, almost like as if it's a spring wheat, then you would could approach it with the latest safe sowing date, but it's I find it, the answer there a little bit insatisfactory. So if we select varieties that have been allocated as a late safe, uh, latest safe sowing date and the February slot, we see that there's um, five varieties across all uh, groups. And uh, that includes uh, Spotlight, Firefly, Lead, Zulu, and Skyfall. It just so happens that there's still quite a lot of variety between these varieties in their performance in this uh, slot. So I just happen to know that Skyfall is the best one, but breeders would never uh, say that you can uh, drill that one uh, later than half, half March. So I think RGT has indicated early March as the cutoff for Skyfall. So I think we're out of that window now. Leading on from that, is would there ever be a possibility to compare a late sown winter variety with an early sown spring? I know it's very complicated, but um, it would be interesting um, to see, particularly this year. So, the, that, that's a good question. Uh, the tool, we had not planned to develop a spring weed, a, a tool for spring wheat, um, but if it existed, then it would not allow us to compare the performance straight away. I'm a little bit hazy on um, our actual data compa comparing the performance of winter wheat and spring wheat in the same trials. Um, I think for that kind of information, it might be that it's outside the scope of the recommended list. Uh, but if, if that's an issue, I think it would probably be um, a, a question that I'd, I'd have to ask my colleagues. And again, uh, we've had another question about looking at crop at varieties that are unsown with them. Um, forage and things like that but unfortunately I think that's probably going to be the same thing it doesn't quite fit in with the way we plant variety trials um, correct yeah yeah it's, just, it's the same for uh, tillage regimes um, we we haven't uh, the system our trial system isn't set up to explore the effect of um, cover crops or the sort of subtle ways of um, yeah, cultural control or tillage regimes to how that affects yields are the RL is not set up to uh, assess that really. Brilliant, thank you. Do we have any more questions, Michelle? Um, we've got a couple which I'll go back to people individually on. Um, but other than that, unless anyone's got any last dying questions. Oh wait, Colin, how much winter wheat land growing firefly was flooded? Uh, so we planted a, um, uh, the field we put it in was a 15 acre, so it wasn't massive, but we always do do a small field of um, a testing variety, you know, a variety to, to see how it's going to grow. Um, 
So we put this 15 acre field in and it just was coming through nicely and that's when the water came over. So we did that thing of, right, well, that's bad. So we'll, we'll scratch that. We'll put revelation in the next two fields to it. And then in the February, they flooded as well. So all three have been wiped out completely now. 30 acres completely gone and being replaced by um, spring sown uh, uh, wheat now. Great. A challenging year indeed. Um, thank you very much, Colin, um, for taking the time out this evening. Likewise, Bastian. Thank you again for uh, for giving up your evening to do this. And Michelle, beavering away behind the scenes. Many thanks to all. Pleasure. When the, uh, did somebody ask a question then? No, no, no. I said pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Okay. When the webinar is finished, you'll be taken to a survey. Can you please provide us with feedback on this? And... Um, as I said at the beginning, any ideas for future webinars that will be used to in, inform our programme going forward, that'll be very useful. Again, uh, recorded, it will be on the YouTube uh, channel. Those are Bastian's contact details. If you want to find out m more, you've got some questions that occurred to you afterwards or you were dying to ask something tonight and didn't get a chance, um, please uh, ask Bastian. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see details of our next webinar. In May, we are covering tyres and compaction. That'll be with Stephen Lamb from Bridgestone and Harry Henderson, our colleague in AHDB, Wednesday the 6th of May. Just in case you thought you were going to get away with an hour without hearing it mentioned, um, apologies. Uh, I have to mention this. We have a, a website dedicated to, uh, to the coronavirus. Um, this takes you to uh, information um, should you wish to see it. That brings us to the end. Thank you very much. Thank you all for taking part. We'll see you at the next webinar in May. Thank you.